Your child just turned 18 and now they're an adult. What planning should they have in place? Hi, I'm John Strohmeyer with Strohmeyer Law, and this time we're talking about what planning your young adult needs to have in place. As a first stop, let's remember that once your child has turned 18, they may still be your child, but they're an adult. What that means is, while you could make decisions for them before, once they're 18, you cannot make any more decisions for them. They're an adult, you're gonna need to start thinking about what needs to be done so that you can help them if they get stuck. As a personal view, one of the things I want my parents thinking about when we're thinking about us planning for their young adults is the purpose of these forms is going to be to allow the parents to step in if their child gets incapacitated. What I don't want is allowing the parents to continue to be parents who can step in and save their child from any of the consequences of their bad decisions. This is a time when these young adults need to be allowed to make decisions and make those decisions for themselves. So as we go through these documents, you'll hear me keep coming back to allowing your young adult to make their own decisions. What I don't want to do is enable the parents to continue to treat their children as though they are still children and not the young adults the law sees them as. So where do we start? Well, the first thing we want to think about is a medical power of attorney. This is going to be the first document that we think about because when someone is incapacitated and they're over 18, there is nobody who is enabled or appointed to make the decisions for them regarding their medical care. So even though your child may be 18 years and one day, they are legally they are legally an adult, and that means that they can make their own medical decisions. If they're incapacitated, even though they were your minor child 72 hours ago, you can no longer make those decisions for them. So we want to start with a medical power of attorney that allows that young adult to make to name somebody to make decisions for them for medical purposes if they can't. The document we want to pair this with is a HIPAA waiver. So HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The major thrust of this form is it's going to allow an adult to authorize their doctors and other medical providers to discuss medical information with certain people. In my practice, generally, I want the HIPAA authorization to overlap with the medical power of attorney so that everyone who's named as an agent or a successor agent in the medical power of attorney to also be authorized to talk to the doctors under HIPAA. Depending on where you are, this may these may be two separate forms or they may be a single form. This all depends a lot on the state where you live and the laws that you're living under. So make sure that you're talking to somebody who really knows how those forms should look in your state. Another document your young adult may be interested in is a living will or an advanced directive to physicians. Now, this is gonna allow your young adult to make certain decisions regarding their end of life care. Here in Texas, this covers two separate situations. First, a terminal condition where the adult is incapacitated and expected by doctors to pass in the next six months. Well, what should happen? Withhold life-sustaining treatment or continue life-sustaining treatment. Broadly speaking, turn, turn the machines off or leave them on. Additionally, the other situation is a, what is known as an irreversible condition. So if the, the adult is incapacitated, but doctors don't know when they're going to pass. If you remember the Terry Schiavo situation from years ago, this is generally how I ask, or get clients to think about it. You're in bed, you're incapacitated, and doctors don't know when you're gonna pass, but they know given a long enough timeline, you will, have, you will pass. Now, the living will may not be signed. I don't make all of my clients sign it. It is a really personal decision. Things to think about, not all of my clients sign this, and there, there are many reasons for it. Generally, clients are signing this if they're unsure their medical agents can make the right decision, they're unsure their medical agents will make the right decision, if they're, they just don't want to put their medical agents in a position of having to make that decision, they just don't want you know to put that burden on them, or finally, if they're just really clear about what they want to happen, then we can sign that living will. We've got a whole separate video on these documents, so don't forget to go check that out if you're looking for more information. 
The other document we want to think about is a durable power of attorney. Now, unlike the medical documents, which are only effective if the, the person signing it is incapacitated, the durable power of attorney is used to allow somebody to make financial decisions for the person signing it, but they can allow that person to start making de those decisions immediately. Now, when I'm working with a married couple, generally I will suggest that the married couple make the durable power of attorney effective immediately. Why? Well, they're building a life together and their spouse may be out of town, may not be able to make it down to the bank. Any of a million reasons why one spouse can't be in one place to sign something. But for a young adult, I don't like effective immediately powers of attorney. Why? Again, going back to the broad theme, these are young adults, they need to be given the space to make their own decisions. What I don't want to do is allow a parent who clearly means well to continue to make decisions for their young adult in the thought that they're going to make those decisions so that the young adult doesn't have to. This is the time where these young adults, again, are learning to spread their wings, and we want to encourage that. So when it comes to the durable power of attorney, I do want young adults signing this, but I'm generally recommending that these be springing powers of attorney so that parents can come in really only if the child is incapacitated. Two documents I don't necessarily think are appropriate for young adults. Well, first is going to be a last will. Wait, what? Not a last will? Generally, young adults probably don't need a last will yet. Why? They don't have enough stuff. They'll probably have a bank account, maybe a car, and then their stuff. But what they won't have are the big ticket items that we generally want to control with a will. In this case, I'm thinking about things like brokerage accounts, townhouse, house, any of those big ticket items that aren't going to get covered in what we here in Texas can use to transfer uh, under a small estate affidavit. Now, if your family is more well healed, this may not be the right answer for you, but for a lot of families, once somebody turns 18, really they may have, uh, those young adults may just have a bank account and not much else. Another thing that may be out there is the FERPA waiver or the Federal Education Rights and Privacy Act. The FERPA waiver allows the young adult to grant someone else the right to access their final grades from an educational institution. A lot of parents are interested in this because they think they still have a right to get access to that, those grades from the schools. But the other side of it is, these young adults are now adults and it's their right to waive. I don't want to get into a deep discussion of this in this short video, but I'll leave it as we want to let these young adults be able to make their own decisions. And so generally I'm recommending that young adults not sign this form and then learn how to have those conversations about grades and what's going on with their parents. So we talked about a lot of things today. Generally, when we're talking about estate planning for young adults, we want to think about what happens if something happens to that young adult. Now, we definitely want the medical power of attorney and HIPAA authorization. We may want an advanced directive or a living will, depending on that young adult's wishes. We also probably want to consider having a durable power of attorney in case the young adult is incapacitated. Now, most young adults won't need a living or won't need a last will and testament just yet, and they probably are ready to get a little bit of privacy when it comes to their grades. So having a FERPA waiver in place may not be appropriate, even if some parents want that. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got other questions about this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.